stranger reads it them wrong. I was your rose, sweetie, planted in your garden, watered and nurtured and fed with such love. Placed in the portion that filled the sunlight, grace stalking my petals with coolness at night. I would sleep in anticipation of the very next day, but I would yet again get to hear you say, my beautiful black crow, you shine like no other. Blush as you gently touch me and stroke my stem so tender. One day I bloom ready to show you my gratitude, to only see that you had left me in my solitude. No longer on the receiving end of your adoration, as you willingly allow a full infiltration. I gazed around wondering what I had done wrong, that your gaze was no longer set on me so strong. In that moment, I realized I must change like the butterfly, to garner other attributes to catch your wandering eye. I wanted to be a chrysanthemum, your golden flower of light, or maybe show strength like the gladiolus with no reaction to strike. I wanted you to kiss me quick, so I knew you would forget me not. I'll be like the lilac to show growth and progress as the flower. I yearn to be like the lotus, hoping you will see my purity, or treat me like your favorite flower and adore me like the lily. It was then I wanted to be a daffodil so I could start giving to you. An iris of hope that you will return the love I have for you. But as you continue to tend to the other flowers in your garden, my unheard cries and unattended silence only made me harden. I became the black lotus to show rebellion and sophistication after being in toxication by the healing of the nation. I channeled my inner narcissist, it was time to self love. I will be the olive leaf gently carried up by your love. The African violin reminded me of just who I am. No matter the climate or situation, still I will stand. The blue roses of wisdom and perfection whispered gently that a rose is still a rose, and it was the instant decree. For a rose can never lose that, that which is her beauty. Today and forevermore, I will be that black rose you see. Inspiring confidence and courage as wind blows through the tree. That black rose is sensual. All the other flowers are beautiful. Now how do you feel knowing that and still didn't pick me? Who would believe that after all of that? Still didn't pick me. Thank you. Yay, we're back. He just started screaming out. in the background. I know, and you see like when they come then the car came and I was like, I hope all this sounding deep because <laughs> it's like whenever you're recording, all of a sudden at that moment yeah. the water just got ten times. Louder, <laughs> everything. <laughs> Anyway, okay, guys, as we were saying, so now let's talk more about the Poets' Lounge. Okay. Um, talk about your history with the Poets' Lounge. My history with the Poets' Lounge. Uh, so Poets' Lounge was founded seven years ago, and uh, it's because I actually, this was when I returned back to the island from college, and, you know, in, in the States, there's a whole, because it's so much of a bigger environment, you have a lot more representation and more opportunities to engage in, you know, said poetry or other type of entertainment prospects. And I came back and there was, I missed the whole poetry slams and the poetry nights and all that stuff that I used to go to when I was in Tampa. So I was like, hey, but well, why isn't anybody doing it more consistently down here? There were people doing it mm -hmm. and um, there were a lot of events and then we went, would go to those events mm -hmm because you know we miss that but it will only be here and there like pop up like maybe yeah. only during the summer but like what was uh lisanne's yeah i'm trying to remember now so, and to then do. like after the summer Shout out to <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right <laughs> um so then i came up with the idea like okay let's go ahead and at least have a monthly event you know and if all goes well we'll get to the point where we can do it weekly and um maybe i'll get a lounge and have a poet's lounge every night you never know but um, I met up with some other like-minded poets and some that I've known since like kindergarten. So <laughs> my MC, Sharon Sleeve Valise, uh, Glenda, she's actually more of our like marketing and operations and she helps me with a lot of the stuff. And then we recently had our, resi our resident DJ, which is Wendell Moore. And besides that, we have partnerships with other locations that we were doing pop-up events and such. So Poets Port Lounge is actually something really important to me because we've been doing it consistently for seven years, barring like natural disasters and pandemics. Yeah. 
but um it's going strong and then you start to see the the void that we filled with the poorest lounge like people are like when is the next one when is the next one because now they have a venue and an opportunity to express themselves with you know like minded people so that's my baby poet's lounge <laughs> awesome so let's talk about you as a poet why do you write poetry or what motivates your poetry um in the beginning poetry was kind of like my diary so when something was really really bothering me or even something i was really really happy about or even something like something that's deep emotional for me yeah. i would write a poem about it and like the words would just flow and then like you know sometimes you just need to get it out yeah. but you don't have the guts to say it to the person or but i've actually written some <laughs> love poems and gave it to the person it's mortifying now but uh, <laughs> But, um, and then there are those poems where it's like purging itself of all of the emotions to be like, okay, I cannot stab this person. So <laughs> let me just write it down. I cannot stab like, them. Really I'll aggressively. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and um, it just turned into an outlet for me mm. where, you know, you sit down and sometimes you just need to get it out. You need to put pen to paper. And um, another thing, going back to the Polis Lounge, where I've tried to make it that we also hone in on the craft is that we do things so mm. now you have to write about this so it makes your mind work towards that instead of just what you wanted to write down you know like you decide if i tell you you got to tell me about trees now you're looking at nature in different ways and as the wind blows you know mm -hmm. it's like you get to be a lot more creative with the craft and like you said being a wordy yeah so i'm that kind of personality i guess just yeah it it, it, it's so true what you said cause, and that's what i always say is my thing with poetry was my outlet so yeah. when i was my best poetry is from being really sad yeah and it was that outlet and my mother she always says that oh okay she's gonna go write a poem now like yeah. i would lock myself in my room and i would write my poetry so Wait. for a while like when i wasn't so sad it was like I would write poetry like because I could rhyme, but I didn't feel it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't feeling it that yeah. same way. It was and like, tough. sometimes you, even if it's not about being sad, sometimes you get like this random inspiration. Like sometimes I'm in the shower mm. and like I'm singing, I'm like, mm. and then I start like freestyling. Okay, yeah, that's another thing we were talking about. So Ooh. freestyling, Put and then <laughs> I'm like, okay, I like what I just did there. I'm like, I gotta write a poem about that one. I'm gonna use that line in the next poem. So yeah. Just, it comes to you in waves and sometimes you just need to like hold on to it and write it down even if you just write down that those two lines and you'd be like that's i'm it. gonna work that's what this. that's what i had to start doing like if because so, sometimes something would come to me and i have it in my head and then i wouldn't write it down and then after it's gone and i had to make that transition from okay only when i'm sad letting things out but also mm -hmm. when something was i don't know inspiring me or something that i wanted to talk about to Put it to, to paper and another thing that i find i had to evolve i think that's the, the next question is um your style of poetry but like because like when we started i think rhyming poetry was very that was like the way but like yeah. no sometimes i could write a poem and it doesn't necessarily rhyme or mm. not in that every yeah, bar kind of way yes yeah. not so sing-songy so can you tell us more what's your poetry style do you have a specific one you like to play with different styles um i think i don't really think i have a style per se like one specific style because I realized like how I said where you're trying to grow and gain different ways and um, different knowledge of using your words I think when I went to the States and then I was introduced to like spoken word and like you know all those different types of methods of being a poet I tried to like incorporate it mm -hmm. like okay you know what I feel like this is what I'm feeling with this one this topic I wanted to come across in this way mm -hmm. so i would try my best to be like okay i know how i'm gonna write it i know how i want it to sound okay yeah. it has to keep like that keep like that so you still have an element where you're um you have your sing song you once you have yeah. your rhyme every bar once and then you have the ones where you go like a whole paragraph and you're like is this a poem or a speech yeah <laughs> yeah you know but it's really just however you evoke the emotion and get your message across yeah like this bus in the background <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> okay um did you learn poetry in school and if so well depend on the answer do you think poetry should be stressed more in school um did i learn it in school i don't know 
maybe maybe I um I read a poem because of like a, a school project and I realized I liked it. It's it's quite possible. I think it's like all very Shakespearean of you know the type of novels that you have to read for book reports and stuff. Maybe it was that kind of stuff that actually got me into it. But definitely, yes. I do think that it's a, a addition to the school curricula that would benefit the students immensely because when you know how to play with your words to like hit a topic so either abstractly or on the nail, it's just it's just something that's adding to your your vernacular. Yeah. And um, poetry exactly. can be so much fun. It's a lot more fun than math. <laughs> you know. And um, so you can make it really interesting. I think. I think we can have like the the poet that did the inauguration speech, right? Yeah. The inauguration yeah. poet. Like Beautiful. there are so many things that you can aspire to, depending on if you get the opportunity to work on that craft. So yeah, most definitely, I think there should be, just how there's a music class and mandatory gym, why? But <laughs> you know, like, yeah, I wanna do poetry in, in school too. And I think kids will actually really like that. Like we had our kids poets lounge and you will be surprised at how many kids came out and they're like in their teens and they are nice. rocking these poems. And I'm nice. like, wow, nice. I am nice. very impressed with this, you know, so. Nice. I made a list of just, I just thought of it when I put the question, like how many things can I think of that you can learn from poetry? So mm -hmm. I'm gonna say them and then maybe okay. you think um, of some others too. Onomatopoeia, because you know, you put in like the sounds can come into your poetry, alliteration, similes, metaphors, hyperboles, that's like exaggeration, mm -hmm. and just even your own self-expression, because we think we both said that like poetry was a way to get your words out if you didn't, weren't able to talk to the person it was a way to say what you had to say in this way and i what i think is interesting about it is some kids don't they don't want to write a whole paragraph but poetry is so diverse that even if you just write today i feel like crap mm. something just bothering me mm. i didn't know what it was you know like you can just put just short lines and it can be a poem without having to put it in that, okay, you need a beginning, you need this opening, you need, like, it gives you this freedom to just write what is on your heart. And um, poetry, like, that's why I, I like song lyrics so much, because when somebody makes that pun or something, you say, like, even with rap, like, mm -hmm. that's a part of rap I appreciate. I'm like, oh, that, that's so yeah, sick. So yeah. kids who are into music in that way, if they can see that connection between poetry and rap or song lyrics. And you know, so it's, it's, it's interesting that you brought that up because a lot of people, like, they say Tupac is one of the greatest rappers that ever lived, right? And he started out as a poet. He would just there write poems and then he would make it into songs. And you know, like, those rap, like, Lil Wayne, oh my God, he's a master poet. Like, yeah. probably why he's such a great artist, you know? Yeah. And um, just to hear somebody sing something in a song, and you're like, okay, I felt that to the core. I felt that to the core. Yeah. Like the R&B songs, they say they don't make R&B like they used to anymore. They really used to show, like, love and express it in words. And yeah. you're like, okay, if somebody was to tell me that tomorrow, I'm marrying him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a wrap. <laughs> it's a wrap. It's done. <laughs> you I, have I mean, me a hello. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Facts. Facts. So poetry is really, really big. I would say even if they can't do a poetry class, like, it should be an integral part of your English lesson or you know whatever language you're given because there's so many things that you can teach through poetry so our closing question how is poetry specifically at the poets lounge playing a role in cultural preservation i think it is just because like i said we are finding ways to merge the dutch and the french side so you have the dutch poets it. the english poets um the french poets and also we have like some of our poets are teachers. Mm. Here's one. <laughs> and they would actually have some poets of from the old days. Like for instance, we have poetry, a poetry theme for St. Martin Day. And you have to write something about St. Martin. And some of the poems that come up is like, oh, you remember the tamarind tree when we used to pick the cotton and split the peas with your grandmother. And like, you're actually reminding people of the history through that poem. And like as you're sitting now, you're listening to 
remember back in the days, yeah. you remember that poem, right? Mm -hmm. And everybody was like, yes, we remember, we yeah, remember. Yeah, it gets everybody like, hyped. So, if you go ahead and post that, like for instance, um, the book in the UC, um, publishing group they have all those published poets local poets and now that is on paper it is a part of history now so you can easily have a book of St. Martin poetry and all of that is going to become and stay a part of our heritage so 10 to 20 years down the line somebody will pick up and be like he had a tamil tree by that roundabout yes. I didn't know that no. you know and that way you kind of keep the history alive and going because I think in the Caribbean we don't have a good enough representation of our culture and our history Amen. that can be easily shared with you know someone that's never had like Mabi and be like what's Mabi you yeah. know and yeah. be like okay when we mix the bark of the tree and it's like what bark of the tree <laughs> what is Mabi but at least now it's written down in history and you can revert to that you could teach your children how to make Mabi, how to make a Johnny K. It's just like those kind of things. And I think um, because poetry holds elements of history, of the reality that you're living in, what you're feeling, and it puts it into something that the other person is supposed to easily understand, it plays a really, really integral part in that kind of stuff. Beautiful. I want to add to that, like, because I've been to the Poets Lounge, and it's always interesting, like, sometimes, like, you yeah, have sections where it goes into, like, the history cultural mm -hmm. poetry then you have like maybe some relationship kind of poetry like mm -hmm. they have some some deep stuff you know mm -hmm. and i think all of it like is a form of storytelling because even if you write like a modern day poem but like you know you use colloquial expressions mm -hmm. or like, that's now playing into this modern history like oh you know the time when they used to do this you know mm -hmm. so i think all of it encompasses um cultural preservation the old the new and I hope you guys will continue to do so because I think it's really, really vital and it's a great outlet. On yeah, I, I really, I really hope that we can continue to do it. And like I've been saying forever, we're, we're hoping to continue to get more and more partnerships and we can do the things like getting it, if it's not in the actual education system, that we now have something that the schools can compete, you mm -hmm. know? Oh, um, yeah, that poetry cool. is a part of the talent shows yes. now, you know? Yeah, so, good. yeah, those are the kind of things that we're hoping we can get to, but everything takes time, and so I'm actually happy, although you woke me up really early for this, <laughs> that, you know, you gave me the opportunity to sit down and do this with you on the podcast, because now this is another avenue where I'm getting it out there and people can reach out and we can make some kind of cool stuff happen with poetry. You know? Yes. So. Yes. More wordies. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you want to say anything else? When is the next Poets Lounge? If people want to... I have no idea week? when the next Poets Lounge <laughs> is. To be absolutely honest, um, the pandemic has really bothered <laughs> the schedule of that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it's a very tricky situation in the sense of you're speaking into a mic all night and you know passing a mic from hand to hand mm -hmm. we just want to kind of be a little bit more careful with that. how we're going forward with the poetry night um during the lockdown we did the video poetry trying to keep it going and um we're hoping that once you know whether it's because the vaccination numbers get higher or you know we finally get to herd immunity where you know we don't have to worry about the COVID numbers as much then we'll resume but for okay. now we're just I guess we're just home writing poets about COVID okay, <laughs> about, okay. so you know, everybody keep writing to get out. Yeah. so by the time you, you, you come back it's gonna be like all right I got yeah. points to share yeah okay well it was great speaking with you thank you so much for coming and doing the interview on the linguistic aisle we're gonna see you guys next time Ciao. thanks for having me bye, bye. <laughs> Welcome back, linguistic language lovers. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I thought it was very important because poetry is really my thing. From since I was a child, this was probably one of the first ways I really enjoyed expressing myself and in the truest, rawest, most honest form, writing poetry was my outlet and everybody needs an outlet. Um, you know, in the world, it's so much easier to appreciate what's out there, what you see and what's flashy. But poetry, it gets you at the core, at the heart. 
um, and of course it can be very flashy and funny too there's so many ways to manipulate poetry and that's why it's so awesome but it really speaks to the core of the poet you know we love movies we love music that is what is very popular in media but have you ever sat down and thought about who writes the movies we need writers to write movies we need lyricists to write songs so that's why words are very important for me especially writers who write poetry because it's a very artistic form um, yeah, so I'm very happy that Ezra is continuing to hold on this space for poets because, like I said before, everybody needs an outlet. And if you have the space, then it gives you this room to express yourself and also to connect with like people. So kudos to her for doing that. At this time, I'm going to make space to share just a little peek of the next episode, which is going to be with the team from Sualiga Slangs. I was very, very excited to do this interview and we had an amazing time. So since I was late releasing this podcast, here's a small clip of what you can expect in the next episode. See you next time. Ciao. Nice. Okay, what is your favorite quote? Maybe a Suligan quote or any quote? Yeah. Yeah. Don't humbug me. Don't humbug me. Nice. That is, I, I would say mine is me, Abel. Hey, my own is morning. Morning. Very good. Mm. Favorite song or song lyric at the moment? Hmm. Well, don't ask me why, but I love that song. <laughs> nice. I was harassing this uh, on Spotify. <laughs> but I was like, Kuga Slicer, I don't know why. It's the beat, it's the rhythm, it's it's everything. So it's the words too. Call, I don't know. Like I don't. I just love that song. <laughs> um, I like the song Splash from um, I think it's Alison Hanks who sings it. I'm not even sure who sings the song. I was looking. Um, it's Patrice Roberts, and I like it because the beat of the song is really, really fast, and um, it reminds me of good times at the gym doing fire feet. So. Quite fun song. Mm, I would say Good Good from Marsha Montano. Yeah. Yeah. And now give me one word that describes you. Mm, fabulous. <laughs> 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 they was waiting on that answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say my name, Joy. Joy. Um, quiet. Right, so that was our lightning round. Mm.